Now let us discuss the first power cycle that is the gas power cycle. We already, we already discussed that in the gas power cycle, the working substance will remain gas throughout the cycle, right? There should not be any phase change. And the gas power cycle is working on the Brayton cycle, right? We already studied the reversed Brayton cycle in the gas refrigeration system. Now we have to study the Brayton cycle. Just we have to reverse the cycle, right? Now, if you see that the various components which are used in the gas power cycle are this is your compressor this is your compressor in which gas is compressed this is the combustion chamber this is your combustion chamber combustion chamber in which heat supply is there in which heat is added to the gas this is the turbine right this is your turbine in which expansion will takes place right now if i can say suppose this is the inlet of the compressor let us say this is point 1 right let us say this is point 1 inlet of the compressor now in the inlet of the compressor a working fluid will enter it will compressed up to point 2 in the point 2 the the gas is gone to the combustion chamber here we had some heat, some heat is added in the combustion chamber. Let us say this is QS, heat supply is QS, right? Heat is added to the gas and after this heat addition process, we have a turbine where some work is given, some work output. This turbine will give some work, let us say WT. This turbine will give some work, let us say WT. This is a compressor, it will consume some work. Compressor will consume some work, let us say WC. WC is the work consumed by the compressor. And after the expansion process, the let us say this is your 3, this is point 3. And after the expansion, let us say this is point 4, the working substance will, will reject or will goes to the surrounding, right? Then after one cycle, in the new cycle, in the second cycle, new working fluid will enter and the same process will happen right so this is your open cycle this is a case of your open cycle in which after each and every cycle new working substance is entering into the system execute the process and leaves to the surrounding right it will be rejected to the surrounding so this is a open cycle now this is a power cycle uh, in which the power is the output so if I can say is this WT is the work done by this turbine, work done by this system is WT and WC is the work consumed by the compressor, right? So there is a shaft, this shaft is there which connects the turbine and compressor because we have to give some work to the compressor. So from where that work will come, that work will be given by from this WT, some amount of WT which is equal to WC is given to the compressor right suppose 20 units is required by the compressor and this turbine will produce 100 units so out of this 100 units 20 units will be given to the compressor and then the network output available with you is the network output will be the network output will be your turbine work minus compressor work the network output will be turbine work minus compressor work right and this turbine and compressor is connected with a shaft, right? Connected with a shaft. This is a shaft from where th this will take some power or some work from this turbine and gives it to the compressor, which is equal to WC. So this is an open cycle. If we want to take a closed cycle, let us say this is a closed cycle. This one is the closed cycle, closed Brayton cycle, right? Suppose this is a compressor, this is your compressor, let us say this is point 1, this is point 1, inlet to the compressor. After compressor, the gas will enter into the combustion chamber, right? This is your combustion chamber, in which some amount of heat is added, some amount of heat is added, let us say QS is the heat supply. This compressor will take some work, let us say WC. After this heat addition, let us say this is process point 3, 
it will the gas will goes to the turbine this is the turbine and turbine will give you some work which is equal to wt right suppose this is your point 4 this is your point 4 and after turbine this gas will be going to the intercooler this is some intercooler or you can say condenser this is some intercooler or condenser from here some heat is rejected to the surrounding from here some heat is rejected to the surrounding this is basically a heat exchanger this is basically a heat exchanger so some heat will be rejected to the surrounding and the then this same gas will recirculate in this cycle the same gas which is entered here in the first cycle the same gas will be entered will be circulated again and again in the cycle right so this is a example of closed cycle in which new working fluid is not entering after every cycle the same working fluid is recirculating and this is a turbine shaft this turbine and this compressor will be joined with the help of a shaft so some amount of turbine work will be given to the compressor which is equal to wc then here also we have that the network produced by this cycle will be wt minus wc wt minus wc right this is the network produced by this cycle right now this is the basic line diagram of the Brayton cycle we have we only discuss this closed cycle we only discuss this closed cycle we have one compressor one combustion chamber one expansion device or you can say turbine and one heat exchanger or you can say condenser or you can say intercooler from where heat will be rejected to the surrounding so these four devices we have which will operate in the cycle and this is known as Brayton cycle now if we talk about the processes in the Brayton cycle if we talk about the processes in the Brayton cycle we have four process process 1 2 2 if we will see we will start from the process 1 2 2 right process 1 2 2 process 1 2 2 is in the compressor right process 1 2 2 process 1 2 2 is in the compressor so this is this this process is isentropic that is reversible adiabatic isentropic compression process 1 to 2 is isentropic compression in compressor isentropic compression in compressor this is process 1 to 2 right next is process 2 to 3 process 2 to 3 is heat addition this is heat addition and if you remember the reversed Brayton cycle in the reversed Brayton cycle all the heat addition and heat rejection process are at constant pressure right so this is heat addition at constant pressure heat addition at constant pressure this is also a reversible process heat addition at constant pressure process 3 to 4 is in the turbine or expansion device this is isentropic expansion process 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion right and process 4 to 1 which is in the intercooler this is constant pressure heat rejection constant pressure heat rejection in intercooler constant pressure heat rejection in intercooler or you can say in the condenser right so these are the four process in the reversed Brayton cycle isentropic compression constant pressure heat addition isentropic expansion and then constant pressure heat rejection so these are the four process occurred in the gas power cycle and the gas which is running in this cycle will remain gas throughout the cycle right there should not be any phase change that's why we say that it's a gas power cycle now we have to discuss we have to do the analysis of this reversed uh, of this Brayton cycle first of all let us discuss some about some of air standard assumptions which we have to take similar to that which we already studied in the IC engine or in the RAC we have some assumptions right first assumption is we are assuming first is your cold air assumption cold air assumption first assumption in the Brayton cycle which we have to take is cold air assumptions that means CP and CV is not a function of temperature that means CP and CV are constant right we are assuming that CP and CV are constant 
right they are not a function of temperature with the temperature the value of cp and cv are not changing this is the first one second assumption is because it's a work it's a gas cycle so working fluid will remain gas this is the second assumption there should not be any phase change working fluid will remain gas throughout the cycle working fluid will remain gas throughout the cycle this is the second assumption third assumption i am taking changes in kinetic energy and changes in potential energy are negligible we are saying that because all the all the four devices compressor combustion chamber turbine intercooler all these process all these if you talk about only expansion process this is this turbine is a open system because mass is entering mass is leaving right so these are the flow devices steady flow devices you can say right so we are assuming that the changes in kinetic energy and potential energy of the working fluid will be negligible when it will come from when the process will be occurring in any of the devices right we are assuming changes in kinetic energy and potential energy are negligible and fourth one is fourth one is we are assuming that compression and expansion process are adiabatic compression and expansion process are adiabatic compression and expansion process are adiabatic that means there sh there should not be any heat loss right there should not be any heat loss that means this turbine and this compressor are insulated there should not be any heat transfer from the turbine and compressor to the surrounding right so they are insulated they are insulated they are because we want the process to be adiabatic right now these are the four assumptions which we take while we are solving for the thermodynamic analysis of this uh, brayton cycle now let us discuss some some theory portion that what will be the advantage of closed cycle why we prefer this closed cycle over this open cycle some advantage are there in the closed cycle you can use any grade of working fluid right we have different grades of working fluid or you can say working fuel you can say different grades means some of the fuels will have more calorific value some of the fuels have less calorific value so in this closed cycle any any working fuel anything which can burn and it can give you heat that can be used as a working fuel because because this gas or you can say this working substance which is running in this system this working substance will not mixed with fuel right it is not mixed with fuel in the combustion chamber you can say that in the combustion chamber what is happening that this gas is flowing through the pipe and here we have some fuel which is burning and it will give heat to the gas right but the fuel and the gas are not mixed with each other so you can you can use any grade of working fuel that can burn and that can give you heat any working fuel you can use this is the first advantage second advantage is there is not problem of blade erosion that in that turbine in this turbine there is not no problem of blade erosion why blade erosion because there should not be any foreign particles if you burn anything and if the if it is not a closed cycle if you can say if the working fuel fuel and the gas mixed with each other and when they strike on the blade then because of some foreign particles because of some particles that particles when they strike the turbine blade at very high velocity then they may uh, they may occur the blade erosion blade they may do the blade erosion right and the blade profile will change and because of that efficiency will be decreased right so there should not be any problem of blade erosion because there should not be any foreign particles only gas is running gas is flowing over the turbine blade and in the closed cycle higher the pressure ratio it will give the better efficiency that we will discuss when we will we will derive the formula of efficiency of the brayton cycle then you can observe that higher the pressure ratio gives the better efficiency and the closed cycle can work below the atmospheric pressure this is the most important thing that the closed cycle can work below the atmospheric pressure the closed cycle will work below the atmospheric pressure this open cycle cannot work below the atmospheric pressure because when the when the 
exhaust gases after the expansion when the gases are goes to the surrounding the surrounding temperature will be equal to atmospheric temperature that is patm here the temperature is atmospheric temperature right so to flow because we always see that the fluid will flow generally from high pressure to low pressure the pressure gradient will be favorable for the flow then only the you can say that gas or the exhaust gases will go out of out of the cycle easily if you can see that here the atmospheric pressure is there and at the outlet of the turbine the pressure of the gas is less than atmospheric so because of this more pressure at the surrounding there may be a backflow there may be a backflow there may be a force acting on the gas and it may it may happen that the gas will be backflow right so in the open cycle that pressure here must be greater than atmospheric pressure and and this pressure if you put a restriction on the pressure here because in the turbine if the expansion process will takes place in the expansion pressure is decreasing right so so higher the decrease in the pressure higher will be the work output right if you want this work turbine work more then you have to reduce the pressure more right so but there is a condition that this pressure the reduction in the pressure suppose here we have 100 bar the reduction in the pressure cannot be less than atmospheric because it has to go out but that condition is not with the closed cycle because there is no interaction between the surrounding and the system right there is no interaction between the because this working fluid will not go to the surrounding they will just flow through these pipes they will flow through these pipes so you can maintain a pressure here less than the atmospheric pressure and for that condition you can make the expansion process more you can expand the gas below the atmospheric pressure also because it has to run through these pipes only so there should not be any issue so it can work below the atmospheric pressure this is the most important advantage of the closed cycle that it has it can work below the atmospheric and then you can get more work output right but some of the disadvantages are also there with the gas power cycle first one is it's they are very bulky in nature right closed cycle are very bulky because one extra device is attached one heat condenser is attached so they are very bulky and very costly and very difficult to maintain right they are very difficult to maintain most important thing is that absolute leak proofing is difficult you cannot make the system that absolute leak proofing that there should not be any leakage to the system to, to the surrounding so this is a disadvantage because they are very bulky in nature their weight is more because of the addition of this one extra device that is the intercooler they are very bulky and if they are very bulky they cannot be used for the aircraft application right so in the aircraft the engine the aircraft engine is working on the open cycle not on the closed cycle remember this right so they are not practical for the aircraft application they can be used in the marine application right in the marine application the engines which are using for the power output for the power generation are working on the closed cycle not the open cycle so these are the some of the disadvantage and advantage of the closed cycle right now after this discussion we have to see the thermodynamic analysis of the brayton cycle